Welcome to join the PCR e-course, the Renal Innovation, putting guidelines into practice. And in this session, there are two parts. The first part is from me. I will talk, talk to you, uh, share with you what is the patient identification tool. I'm Dr. Zhongda Wang, the interventional cardiologist and the professor of medicine from the National Taiwan University Hospital. And I'm also the president of the Taiwan Hypertension Society. I have nothing to disclose. And first, I would like to share with you what is the purpose for the uh, patient identification tool? I think the purpose is twofold. The first is to identify the candidates for renewed innovation. And the second, to construct a, a reasonable uh, pre renewed innovation flowchart uh, for patient assessment. And uh, what I said is based on the three consensus published till now. The first is the Taiwan consensus, which I was the chairperson and uh, published last year. And the second is the Asian cons RDN consortium consensus, and the one, I am also one of the member. And finally is the Italian consensus and the Professor Ribicini will de uh, detail that in, the, in more detail in his session. And when we consider who will be the candidate, we have to consider that in three aspects. The first, from the pay uh, blood pressure's perspective, what kind of blood pressure profile is more suitable for renal innovation? And the second is from the patient's perspective, the patient characteristics, what is the high risk patients? Because the high risk patient will get more benefits from blood pressure lowering that being demonstrated repeatedly in pharmacological trials and also probably renal innovation. And finally, what kind of future, what features are related to sympathetic overactivity, especially in patients with hypertension. So I will uh, separate that into three sectors. The first is about the blood pressure. But um, yeah, according the renal innovation will produce year long blood pressure reduction, one time procedure, year long for the blood pressure reduction, maybe lifelong. And so uh, nighttime blood pressure and early morning blood pressure is very, hypertension in nighttime or early morning is very suitable for renal innovation because, because it can provide uh, all day long blood pressure reduction. So mass or mass uncontrolled hypertension are suitable blood pressure profile for renal innovation. And another aspect for, from the blood pressure point of view is that renal innovation should not be viewed as a less resource for blood pressure control. It should not be reserved for those patients with resistant hypertension alone. Actually, based on this spiral hypertension off-med and radiant solo study, patients with treatment naive blood pressure hyper hypertensive or uncontrolled with only one to three drugs in the hypertension, hypertension on med trial, or the traditional resistant hypertension in the Simplicity Hypertension Japan trial, all demonstrate renal innovation consistently effective in achieving a significant blood pressure reduction in all spectrum of hypertension patients. So these are two blood pressure profile aspects. And in summarize, we, we summarize all the recent renal innovation trials, uh, the inclusion criteria about blood pressure into this slide. And I, what I would like to mention is an, the importance of ambulatory blood pressure re recording. Based on that, we can identify patients with mass hypertension or mass uncontrolled hypertension. Both of them are ideal candidates. And the other, the second aspect for candidates is about the patient. From the patient's perspective, we create an acronym called RDNI2. These five characters uh, identified uh, the five key features of candidates who will be more responsive or get more benefits from renal innovation. The R means resistant. Even though I said resi resistant hypertension should not be considered uh, as the only candidate for renal innovation, but patient with resistant hypertension had higher baseline blood pressure. And then those patients with higher baseline blood pressure will get more benefit or will be more responsive that being observed in pharmacological trials and also in renal innovation. So resistant hypertension is still a candidate for renal innovation. And the D means damage, hypertension mediated organ damage. That means long lasting hypertension or uh, already uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. That's all uh, side effects or complications of hypertension. So those patients are at higher risk and will get more benefits, clinical benefits from blood pressure uh, reductions through any measures. And then the N and D means non-adherent or intolerant. The patient either uh, will feel some side effects of the drug or by themselves, they don't like uh, an hypertensive drug. Even though they get only mild or moderate hypertension, we should let them realize there is a treatment strategy called renal innovation that could be uh, provide 
then uh, effective and the sustained blood pressure reduction. And finally, the two. Two means secondary hypertension. Secondary hypertension being routinely excluded in trials and also being routinely assessed in patients with poor control or un uncontrolled hypertension. But secondary hypertension alone, after treatment, if the patient still got hypertensive, we, should, we, we define those patients as treatment-resistant secondary hypertensive patients. Those patients, we should not exclude the function of, of renal, de renal denervation because the hypertension, the cause of hypertension are multiple and renal denervation is effective for all kinds of hypertensive patients. So if that's belonging to the category of treatment resistance, secondary hypertension, consider renal denervation. They are still candidate for renal denervation. And finally, uh, what features are associated with higher sympathetic tone? The first, high baseline heart rate, greater than 74, average 24 hour. And the clinical features like obesity, obstructive sleep apnea, or systemic atrial fibrillation, clonid insensitive, aldosterone antagonist resistant. Those are features related with sympathetic overactivity and should be responsive to renal denervation. And the last point is isolated systolic hypertension should not be excluded or viewed as a contraindication for renal denervation. That being demonstrated in a recently published the GSR uh, data in Jack 2020 at Meifu. And um, so after this candidate issue, and then we move to the second purpose for the identification tool, the pre-renal denervation assessment, we created another acronym called RAS. That means renal artery angiography, ambulatory blood pressure assessment, secondary hypertension causes identification. We first have to all the way back from secondary hypertension exclusion or identify them, treat them, but if the blood pressure still remain uncontrolled, we confirm the blood pressure status by ambulatory to look at whether there is a daytime or nighttime or mass uncontrolled hypertension. And finally, we check the CT renal angiography. That's very important because the success, the key to the success for renal innovation is comprehensive ablation. And maybe around 20 to 30% of patients got either accessory or some multiple renal artery that could only be identified by C pre uh, pre uh, the CT angiography or very detailed analysis of aortogram. So, and then we listed some post renal denervation assessment, including a CT follow up CT and, and the ambulatory blood pressure. So, in conclusion, uh, in my part, I introduced you the patient identification tool that could be separated into the RDNI2 and RAS. RDNI2 is for the five key features of candidates, and the RAS means the pre RDN assessment three PS uh, components. Blood pressure profile, the mass hypertension is the blood pressure profile. 24 hours is very important. And finally, we emphasize the importance of comprehensive ablation, including both main branch and accessory renal artery. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Flavio Ribicchini. I am an interventional cardiologist and the director of the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine at the University Hospital in Verona, Italy. I don't have conflicts of interest with this topic, which will be focused on the analysis of a recently published position paper uh, proposed by the Italian Association of Hypertension. Uh, the, the paper um, addresses many important items on the management of hypertension, but, but specifically when to perform renal denervation in patients with resistant hypertension or the difficult to treat hypertension. The definition of the difficult to treat patient with hypertension comes after the evaluation of a multidisciplinary team that takes into account, first of all, the ruling out of secondary hypertension, the analysis of the prescription of a rational drug scheme, the evaluation of drug tolerability and adherence, comorbidities, global cardiovascular risk assessment, and of course, patient's preference. Let me share with you a personal point of view of uh, what an hypertensive patient might be. One patient is just having hypertension. It's uh, normally a younger one. Uh, he might be a true resistant hypertensive patient or just one being under suboptimal medical therapy or having secondary causes or simply not taking the pills. A different patient is that with 
hypertension on top of other more important problems that normally are older and have been hospitalized. Being that for chronic kidney disease, coronary artery disease, heart failure, arrhythmias, or peripheral artery disease. So the possible candidates that can be treated with uh, renal denervation can be those with uncontrolled office and uh, ambulatory blood pressure, those under treatment with an associator, association of uh, um, renin angiotensin blocker, calcium channel blockers, and diuretic, but not reaching the target. And of course, after the exclusion of secondary causes and being eligible for the technique. Scientific evidence might include in this population those uh, not uh, ad with adverse effects of spironolactone with poor drug adherence despite extensive counseling. And of course, again, as I said before, those preferring the interventional therapy. The Global Simplicity Registry, it's a very large international study that has been treating patients with resistant hypertension with an average of more than four hypertensive, antihypertensive drugs. And the study has shown dramatic in, in reduction on both office and ambulatory blood pressure measurements at uh, a follow-up of three years. Another difficult to treat population is that of patients with grade one or two hypertension with uncontrolled systodiastolic blood pressure despite taking one to three drugs. And uh, additional evidence can include those with intolerance or adverse effects of the drugs with poor adherence and very interesting those having atrial fibrillation or paracystic supraventricular arrhythmias or, or those having a baseline heart rate above 30, 74 beats per minute in which probably an adrenergic drive is uh, more important than in other populations. Patient preference is again considered an important reason to use the technique. The spiral hypertension on medical pilot study have shown a significant and sustained blood pressure reduction in hypertensive patients being treated with one to, through to three antihypertensive drugs. As you can see in the slide, both the 24 hours assessment and the office blood pressure assessment has been significantly reduced compared to baseline in all these patients. As a conclusion, the Italian document proposed the multidisciplinary evaluation of these uh, high, uh, high difficult to treat patients uh, in a um, renal denervation center, which has both the expertise of the technique and the expertise on the management of these patients. After a global cardiovascular risk assessment, the screening for secondary hypertension and accurate measurement of the blood pressure, the control of the drug adherence and tolerability, together a shared decision making. For those reaching a good blood pressure control and adequate follow-up on time, are for those not reaching the target for a good blood pressure control, undergoing the, the, the procedure, the, the interventional procedure, following the multidisciplinary advice of the team. This is an interesting slide uh, derived from a questionnaire-based cross-sectional survey performed in a German population, showing that among patients with hypertension, but still not taking pills, nearly 40% of them would prefer to undergo renal denervation rather than starting a drug. For those already under one medicine, they still, in a third of patients, would prefer to drop the pills and undergo the interventional procedure. This is the last slide. Uh, it's clear that renal denervation has been reported to be safe and effective, both in hypertensive patients and those with more complex global clinical situation that pa like patients with hypertension spanning from the high blood pressure to those with other comorbidities like kidney, ch chronic kidney disease or those being non adherents to the, to the therapy. It's important always to rule out secondary causes of hypertension. Intensive discussion should be conducted in terms of risk benefits of the therapy and several evidence-based published guidelines and consensus documents have recommended a range of potential candidates for renal denervation procedure, including those with uncontrolled hypertension, those at risk, and those expressing a strong preference as a part of a shared decision-making relationship. I hope this has been useful 
and I thank you for your attention.